Hey, what is going on, party people? Greg Jenkins here from House Monkey Pod. And if you are a Keep user, then odds are you have recently logged in to build an automation and noticed that maybe some things have changed. Um, or if you haven't noticed this yet, then you will soon because there are some changes coming to the way that we build automations inside Keep. And so in this video, I want to show you um, how to use the new interface, what changed and what still is the same, as well as how you can revert back to the previous automation builder if you're not ready to experiment with the new changes. Maybe you've got a launch coming up and you just need to get something built using the tools that you know how to use and don't have time for the learning curve right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here is what you will see when you go to open the new automation builder. Uh, and I should say that you open the new automation builder the same way that you would add automations previously. So from the My Automations list, you can add a brand new advanced automation. Um, you can choose from a template, but most of the time I build from scratch. So here is the automation that I had just started a moment ago. Uh, it does have a little walkthrough of the uh, new automation builder. So let's go ahead and take that. Um, now, you may know that if you've used the prior version of the automation builder, it is consisting of goals and sequences, actions and reactions. When this happens, then this happens. And so goals and sequences are evolving and turning into wins and thens. When this happens, then this happens. And you'll find them on the left-hand side tab. Now, just like before, you will still drag and drop them onto your canvas in order to configure them, but you will notice some functional or, or visual changes, both probably, in terms of what is available and how the configuration settings look and feel for each element. Now, down at the bottom, these have been there previously, but there are some icons to zoom in, zoom out, and move around on the actual builder canvas. Let's go ahead and click next. And that is our very quick and simple walkthrough. Uh, I hope and expect that there is more information here in the Help Center, but let's give this a try. So, uh, as with before, this looks the same. We will uh, title this automation, and if you want, uh, you can put it into a category so or multiple categories. Now, this is the panel, uh, or, the, or the canvas, rather, and this is the uh, panel of wins and thens. So previously, we had the different goals and sequences over here on the left-hand side. So let's start this uh, automation when a purchase is created. So we'll drag it out. Uh, you will notice that uh, whatever you drag onto the canvas, automatically opens for you to configure right then. If you're not ready to configure that, you can click X and it stays there. But you'll notice that it is identifying, hey, setup is still required for this item. So when you are ready, you can go ahead and view and edit in order to configure it. Although I later discovered that this is a setting you can disable. So if you don't want elements to open when you add them to the canvas, you can choose to have them not open, and then you can drag things out and continue to build without necessarily needing it to um, be configured in that moment. Uh, as with before, the these you know purchase settings haven't changed. Order form, product, product category, any purchase. Um, you can also select uh, the payment type if you want to restrict it even further and then click save. Now that little indicator has changed from needing setup to ready to publish. Uh, we have not yet published and as with before, publishing is what will make the draft version of your automation live. So when a product is purchased, then we can toggle over here to the then, we want some things to happen. Now this is where I think the biggest change happens for the new automation builder. Uh, previously, we would drag out a sequence and the sequence acted as a container that we could populate with the different items we wanted to have happen and define the cadence using timers. Um, but now, 
instead of having a sequence, we just add the individual element. So let's say we want a tag to be applied after they purchase. And what will happen here is it'll automatically um, bundle your actions into a then. So the then is the container and that has replaced sequences and it starts when we add that first item, right? So when we add that first item, it creates the then. You can't add a sequence from the left-hand menu. You, you get it just by adding your first then item. Um, and we can connect these uh, as with before. Uh, and that tells the automation builder that when this happens, then we want this to happen. If you wanted additional items to happen after the tag is applied, you can click view and edit and you can uh, configure those additional steps. So we have our tag. Uh, let's go ahead and add a note as well. So purchase completed. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to have other items process in here, maybe a task is created, maybe an opportunity is created, right? Depending on what you are selling or what uh, you know automation you are building, uh, you can define this in whatever way makes the most sense. Uh, let's go ahead and add a email and you'll see that it automatically opens the email builder. So if you aren't ready to configure that email, you can X back out of it. If you are, then you just go ahead and walk through the steps. Uh, this is the, it's the newest email builder. So if you have played with this, this process will feel familiar. Thanks for buying. But if you haven't played with this uh, new email builder, it might be time to try it out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a super simple email here using one of my templates. And there we go. Uh, I will swap out this text and just say, thanks for being a customer. Looking forward to hearing how much you love your new thing. Great. And we'll pop a monkey pod logo in there on the top and call it a day. That's the one I want. And save and exit. Now, uh, one unique uh, aspect for the emails is you do have to mark them as ready once you have finished configuring them. Um, that doesn't happen automatically for these. Uh, you have the ability to leave them in draft mode but still publish the automation at large. So um, if you wanted to use timers, you'll see date, delay, and field timer are here. Uh, so you could have multiple emails. You can still use multiple start triggers within this then sequence. So uh, this process is fairly similar. It's just nested into a then that pops out rather than being um, in a sequence that you deliberately added to the campaign uh, or automation canvas. So we'll go ahead and click done here. Uh, and you can see that that element is now ready to publish as well. So we've got the product is purchased and then the sequence. Maybe we'll rename this as uh, post purchase actions. Um, and as with before, your automation can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. You can continue building these elements out. Uh, you can continue refining them. You can publish the initial version and then you can come back to it and make iterative improvements over time. Um, but here we are. We've got the same automation checklist letting us know that things are ready to rock and roll. So we'll go ahead and click publish and that's it. Now it is live, that unlocks the reporting tab. A few changes here in terms of what details are available. And this is maybe the, the, the V1 version of everything. So you'll note that some things look immediately different, but I think what's most exciting to me about this um, update is it sort of lays the groundwork for future changes. By standardizing the look and feel of this, by modernizing it, uh, they also are updating the infrastructure, the architecture on the back end, and making it easier and easier to a make improvements, uh, add visual reporting, um, you know, introduce new icons or widgets or steps. Uh, but b they're also making it easier for integrations, for developers to add custom. Uh, wins and custom thens, right? To uh, see this list, oops, where is that? To see the list on the left-hand side tool palette 
um, not just say API, but have custom opt-ins or custom uh, integrations that developers from our ecosystem have um, added because the system has evolved to support that type of development where it previously wasn't available. Now, uh, I recommend playing with this if you have the time. Uh, this will feel a little different. There will be a learning curve, um, but I think that the sooner you familiarize yourself with it, the better. Um, I will say that if you are not yet ready to play with this, um, you can toggle it off down here. So if you log in and the new automation builder has been enabled for your app and you are not ready for it, it's just you know gonna get in the way for now, you can toggle it back off and you can still build or edit your automations using the previous automation builder that we've had for, for years and years using goals and sequences. You could see it just converted those elements back to the previous automation builder. Um, if you are using the Max Classic version of Keep Ultimate, or of Keep rather, if you're using this version, uh, in order to access the automation builder, you might need to toggle over to Ultimate um, if you want to try the new version. I don't see a way in this interface to access the updated version of the uh, automation builder. My understanding is that you need to, I could be missing it, but I think you need to first enable Keep Ultimate, and then once it switches you to the Ultimate interface, then you can enable the new automation builder down here, uh, or disable it if you have it on and you are not ready for it. So that is a quick overview of the changes that have been rolled out or are being rolled out to the Automation Builder. I know a number of people have already seen them, but if you have not yet, um, this is what you can expect and how to prepare yourself. If you have questions, comments, or feedback, I'd love to hear them. Just a little, um, I don't know, comfort language uh, or framing rather, in case it is helpful for all of you. Uh, personally, I feel a little frustrated by this change. I've been building automations inside Keep for over a decade, and they're just moving some things around in a way that is going to slow me down in the short term. Um, and so I feel frustrated by that. And if you feel frustrated also, I wanna make sure you know like you're not alone. Um, I do think that there are some benefits to these changes, but the way that I have been framing this conversation up for myself and for you, if it is helpful, is that they're not making these changes to serve the existing users today because the existing users have already experienced the learning curve, have already familiarized themselves with the, the platform that exists. I believe that they are making these changes to make it easier for new customers to get started in the future. And that will serve the existing customers because the more people that are using this platform and using it successfully, the more resources that they can dedicate to improving things for us. So it may feel like, hey, you know, I'm being set back in terms of my familiarity or understanding with this or the pace that I can move at. But in the long run, as more users are successfully using and adopting Keep in general, it should create a rising tide that, you know, lifts all ships. So I'm using that as justification for myself. You're welcome to borrow it as well. If you have any sort of friction or frustration in the short term, remind yourself that this is setting us all up for more features, more stability, more improvements, and more innovation uh, as we get more resources devoted to supporting uh, this platform and this particular tool inside of it. That's it, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them below. If you have success stories or feedback of your own regarding this change or others, you can go ahead and share those as well. Take care.